Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, in last session, we are trying to understand reflection API. First point, we completed what is reflection API. Second, we understood uh, reflection API syllabus. So look at the screen. Okay, what is API, what is API documentation, what is reflection, what is reflection API and next uh, uh, different classes available in the reflection API, different methods of reflection API classes and we are planning to learn five programs on reflection API and very, very, very important accessing private constructor fields and methods of the class. Then next uh, we try to understand the uh, difference in creating object using new keyword and reflection API. Okay, so these are the total 15 points we wanted to learn as part of this reflection API. So first, before going going to deep dive into the reflection API, I need to understand one small program. Oh, look at this code. Here, I'm asking a question, try to think. Identify whether below program is static or dynamic in creating different classes objects. For example, I'm taking A class, B class, C class. These are the different classes I'm giving. Uh, now this class is uh, static nature or dynamic nature. Can you please try to think and tell me? Look at here. Inside this class, I am creating object of class A. Then, is this class static or dynamic? Static nature. Why is it static nature? Because any number of times you run this program, always it create object of class A only. Always it create class A object only. Okay, look at, look at the console here. Now, Java C test.java I compile then execute java test which class is loaded a class which class object is created a class a class object reference now second time again I'm running third time I'm running fourth time I'm running any number of times I execute what happened always it is loading class a only instantiating class a only uh, now tell me, in the real time, now I created one user class, this user class wanted to interact or this user class want to use different classes, then tell me, if I create object of this A class directly here, this user class always can use A class only. If you want to change from this present A class to another class B or another class C, another class D, then what happened, tell me? I must modify the source code of this user class from A to B, B to C, C to D and I should re-save it and recompile it. Observe, open the source code, then change A to B, save it, come back to the, come back to the console, clear screen, compile again test class, compile again test class and execute test class. Now which class is loaded? B class. Okay, B class loaded, B class object is created, B class object is printed. Now here onwards, if you run this class many number of times, any number of times you execute, then every time which class is loading? B class. Then this program is static nature. So if you use the static nature development in the real projects development, is the project accepted in a company? No. So what is the best idea? Here, we should create a user class for accessing different classes, not directly. We must use in the middle one special API called what? Reflection API. Okay, now our user class must contact Reflection API. Reflection API will take care of loading the given class. If you ask A, it will load A class. If you ask B, it will load B class. If you ask C, it will load C class. Okay, clear? So, final conclusion is what? What is the need of reflection API? Reflection API will act as a mediator or connector between user class and implementation classes or subclasses for loading them and instantiating them dynamically at runtime based on the passed class name. So, how would Reflection API used? We will understand with an example in the next program. Thank you.